Good evening, everyone. Today, I'm going to be going over making uh, this tool a pixel art tool in C in about six hours or eight hours. I'd say about eight hours. Uh, why I did it, what I learned, was it useful? Would I recommend it? Uh, yeah, so let's get into it. So, I guess first of all we can go over the features. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's command line. Well, you launch it from the command line. It has a bunch of options here. I'm not going to go too into detail because it's all available publicly on the GitHub, but it's got just a draw, erase, fill, uh, save, and you can launch with a color palette. It's got zooming and panning and that's about it. Um, now, you might ask, well, why would you do this when there's so many other tools out there? And there's a few answers to this question. The first is I actually own a tool called Asprite, um, which I was going to use, but I could not get working on Arch Linux for some reason. I tried for a while, looked around, um, I actually found a version of this on the OR, the Sprite, on the AUR, sorry. Um, which is here, and there's this one, uh, which is an old version before it went uh, pay to pay to play, it's not a play, but before it went commercial. Uh, it was open source at some point, but I believe the author realized that it was really hard to make money uh, selling an open source product and made it closed source. But this is the last version, I think, yeah, 1.2. Uh, I couldn't get this working either. And also, for some reason, it includes a 500 megabyte download for Pandoc. I think it converts the readme into HTML or converts it into a PDF or something like that, um, which is kind of annoying. Anyway, so I couldn't get this working. There's a bunch of people talking about how to get it working in the comments, but for me, none of this stuff worked. And then I thought, okay, well, I've heard about this other thing called, what is it called? Skia? Um, is it Skia? Drawing apps, Linux, ah, uh, Krita, sorry, Krita. You know, I thought, okay, Krita looks pretty good, um, but I think it's more of like a Photoshop thing for doing like more detailed, uh, I guess, non-pixel art. And maybe, maybe it's more general purpose. And then I was like, all right, I'll try and I'll give this a go. So I grabbed that. And for some reason, it does not run on my machine either. And then I thought, okay. Well, while I was looking at this stuff, I was thinking, well, I have Photoshop. My license is still valid for another two months or something. Um, maybe I could use that. But then the thought of running Photoshop through Wine on my computer, I didn't actually try it. It might have been fine. But it just sounded like a nightmare waiting to happen. Although, to be fair, I think Wine has gotten a lot better over the the recent years. Um, but I kind of put that to the side. And while I was looking into these, I was also thinking, well, you know, I'm just learning C. I just started learning C about three weeks ago. And I started learning OpenGL at the same time. All I need to do for my current game project at the moment is build static pixel art images. Um, so if we have a look at here, so this is not from the game. Uh, next, so this is one of the images. It's really tiny actually. I'll try and zoom, but then it does that. So this is just a hexagon, right? Um, nothing special. Right, a hexagon with a plus in it. This is, these are all prototype images for the game that I'm currently working on. And this is the kind of stuff that I needed to draw. So it doesn't need to be anything crazy. 
I thought, okay, well, since I need to learn about writing, uh, writing to textures and learn about drawing all this stuff in OpenGL and handling inputs and all that kind of stuff, why don't I just try and build this thing myself? I have a really simple set of instructions that it can perform and that's it. And so I did. And uh, I'll just open it up real quick. This is what it looks like with default options. Uh, I think you get black. Oh no, you get the uh, the Pico 8 color palette, which is, where is that? That's here. If you don't know about Pico 8, it's a fantasy console, which is kind of interesting. Um, so it's kind of like an emulator, but for a console that never existed. And it runs on Lua, I believe. And there's a bunch of cool little things built. Some people have even added hardware. It's really cool. I haven't developed for it. I don't really like Lua. That's one of the reasons. Um, but some people are doing cool things with this. So I thought, okay, I'll grab a color palette. I went on low spec, which is a really good uh, website for getting color palettes and a lot of things to do with pixel art, actually. Tutorials, etc. And you can browse the palettes here. It's really slow for some reason right now. And anyway, so I chose the Pico 8 color palette because it's just, it's just a nice standard color palette. And then, well, um, as per the documentation, pressing one, two, eight, you can do all these different colors. I can erase them with pressing E. And then if I wanna choose the next eight colors, I press shift one, shift two, shift three, shift four, etc. cetera. Uh, if I wanna do a fill, I press F and then the color, or if I had the color selected, like let's say shift six, then F. All right, great. Now shift four, shift, ooh. Yeah, et cetera, et cetera. So it's pretty simple stuff, um, but you can also erase with fill. So that's cool. Um, yeah, you can drag it around by holding space and just moving the cursor and zoom in and out. You can zoom up to, I think it's 32 times something like that. So the pixels get pretty large. Uh, and if you want the window to be bigger or the canvas to be a different size, well, that's where the command line options come in. So let's just say this screen's pretty big. So I don't know, uh, 1280 by 800. That is not a correct resolution. Well, it's not a 16 by nine resolution, but anyway. Um, so that'll not work apparently. Oh, sorry. That's the um, that's the canvas dimensions. So dash W for the window dimensions, right? And then the, if you want the canvas to be larger, you can do a, something like 64 by 64. It doesn't have to be a square. Uh, one thing about this app is unlike un, unlike better drawing apps, the line does not connect automatically when you draw. If you draw too quickly, it'll skip pixels. So for me, it's not really a problem because I'm not doing anything large. Um, but maybe later I'll implement a correct like line uh, guessing kind of algorithm. All right. Um, so why didn't I use something like GIMP? Well, I was thinking about GIMP and by the time I had gotten to thinking about it, I had already thought maybe I should build my own thing. And there's one other consideration that I didn't talk about, which is battery life. A lot of these programs drain your battery life. So right now I'm on my desktop, which is where I record my videos. But when I'm working, I am almost exclusively working on my laptop, which is an old uh, ThinkPad laptop with one of the small batteries. So the battery life is not great. And I work out of a local university sometimes or a cafe or um, I was renting an office space for a while. And depending on where you're sitting, what you're doing, you might not have access to a plug, uh, especially if you want to sit outside. So battery life has become something that I actually care about. And I thought, okay, well, 
Those things have a lot of overhead, they're draining my battery, especially the web-based apps, although some of them are quite nice. They do drain your battery quite heavily. And I thought, okay, maybe I can just make something really simple. So that's that's what I did. Um, in terms of other things that I learned, I learned about byte packing. So if you think about an image, um, like let's just say this image here, the way that it's represented in a lot of formats, um, well, the way that I represented it in textures in OpenGL is the, the top left pixel is the first pixel in a giant array and the bottom right pixel is the last pixel and it just goes from left to right down like this, across and across and across and across and then you have to kind of figure out based on the width of the image where you should move that pixel down one. So if we have a look at the source code here, um, you can see, where is it? Well, I'm probably not going to be able to find anything too useful right now, but if you want to have a look at the source code, um, the relevant part for this is the, um, the canvas data. So I'll just do a search for that. Um, canvas data here and then putting that canvas data onto a texture in OpenGL. So that was all pretty fun. I got to learn about memory management a bit um, and I got to learn about reading from memory and writing to memory and copying buffers and uh, yeah that's all stuff that I need to learn to do actual game development which is what I'm doing at the moment in C. So that's been pretty useful. Um, I also learned about textures and a whole bunch of OpenGL stuff and mostly from this website, learnopengl.org. Um, uh, .com, not .org, .com. Right, so this website's pretty cool. I think I have it zoomed in for some reason. And pretty much everything you need to know is in this getting started section up to, I'd say transformations and coordinate systems. Um, so this stuff's really quite detailed and goes into maths a little bit if you're a bit scared of that. Well, it's not that hard. I dropped out of maths in high school because I thought, hey, I'm never going to use this. I'm going to be a writer. And that was a mistake. <laughs> Definitely a mistake. Um, however, this is all pretty simple. I have no background in mathematics since year nine. So I didn't even learn linear algebra in high school, unfortunately. Um, but there was another part of this that was pretty useful and it was this in practice 2D game rendering sprites. So this, this section was pretty useful. So this part teaches you how to use a projection matrix um, for 2D sprites, which is great. Um, so this is all pretty cool stuff. Go away, add. There's a lot of ads here. That's cool. And yeah, so that's that's been my experience writing this. Um, would I recommend writing your own tools? Yes, to an extent. Um, I have a feeling that if you're working on a project and you start writing your own tools, it could be very easy to get lost in tool creation forever and just spend years and years making all these tools to make things, but then you don't make the things. That's why I decided that this needs to be very simple and have as few features as possible. Um, I think that's yeah, that, that's pretty much how I feel about make, making a tool like this. Uh, for me, it's also good because I can put it in my portfolio as something that's actually finished. You know, it only took a day and then an extra few hours to add some more features. And now I've got a finished program that people can look at. You can download, you can build it, you can play with it. I haven't actually got a release build yet. I don't know if I will anytime soon, but because this is just for me, but the source is public. 
if you really want to build it, you know, the recommend the requirement is you need GLF W3. And then I think you also need the GLAD, uh, which is an, an OpenGL loader. And that's, you know, it's not too hard to sort out. Now there are two libraries here that I'm using, uh, which are public domain. I believe they're public domain. They're by uh, someone named Sean Barrett, who is very well known in the C, C++ community. Um, and he has a GitHub page STB where he has a whole bunch of these headers, which are libraries to do a bunch of different stuff. So I've got the image loader and the image writer. Um, but yeah, you can see he has done all this crazy stuff here, which I believe is used in a lot of projects. Like a lot of people have recommended using this when I've been, you know, browsing around on the web looking at stuff. So definitely check this out if you're looking into doing some stuff in C or implementing some things. Maybe you don't want to implement these things, you know, maybe you don't want to build your own image loader. Maybe you do. I'm actually considering it um, as a little side project using Farbfeld, which is this. Um, it's an image format. It has RGBA, which is exactly what I need. And it's made by Suckless, who I am a fan of for sure. So I was considering that. But uh, yeah, I guess... You know, if you want to build your own tools, make sure you don't get stuck in tooling hell, you know. Um, if you're on a deadline working for a company and you start building your own tools, that's a totally different story. I work for myself. I said I could spare, you know, a day, two days, whatever it took. And that was totally fine. But if you're spending like months building complex tools and then you're not using them, or you're just way over engineering them, then that's probably not a good idea. Um, I think that's all I really wanted to go over in this video. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, maybe you can critique my C codes. I am a beginner, so maybe you know I'm doing some horrible things here. I just don't realize. So uh, let me know down in the comments or send me a message or something. Or post it on GitHub. Oh, wow, that's way too big. All right. That's it for today. Have a great night or day. Take it easy.